Well, Al, let's start with the mood in the camp. I mean, it, it, it must feel like a real kick in the teeth, that today, is it? It does in there. Um, they're all uh, very angry about the penalty. Everybody's swearing blind that there was no contact and that it just went over. Um, I mean, we're too far, far away to see it from there. And that many bodies in the box, so I can't comment myself. It'd be interesting to see the video. And then there was a melee even after that, and Danny Glover's had his marching orders. Does Danny understand what's happened? Do we know what's happened? No, I can't, I can't get the full feedback. I, I, I saw Danny, it was like someone got him in headlock and uh, then all of a sudden there's a card come out and then I don't know what was, what, whether it was a second yellow that produced the red. I've really no idea, <laughs> to be honest. I'm not going in there and asking him. Well, in terms of your team performance today, it was a, a, a dogged performance. Against a, a side, we know they've got an impeccable home record here. It's a difficult place to come. You must have thought you had the three points in the bag. Yeah. You know, it was one nil down, and I don't think we did give a good account of ourselves in the first half. We had a really good, serious chat in there at half time, and it came out a different team for me. With a bit more, per a lot more purpose, um, equalised with the, you know, with a very similar penalty to, yeah. you know, can't be disputed that penalty. And then it looks as though we've got three, three points with uh, with a fantastic goal from Scott, um, hell of a goal. And that's that's a goal that should have won the game. Yeah. Um, and I say, I just can't, I, I don't know what happened. There's so many bodies in, in the distance that I was away from that penalty. I just don't know. All I can say is that the lads in there, they are swearing blind that there's no contact. Let's talk about a positive today. You gave a debut to a young man on the right-hand side of defence. <laughs> I mean, you can talk about composure, you can talk about looking like you've been in the first team forever. I, I just thought, as debuts go, that was probably right up there. It's funny, isn't it? All the kids that come that come in, you know, started with Duxbury, Turner, Churchman, Lofthouse, um, Todd, Hancock, and now Wes, you know. I think it's, it, it, it just proves, you know, the, if the lads are, are ready, uh, if they're good enough, they're old enough. And, uh, you know, I, I say, I'm, I look at it, it's all of his game today, and uh, I couldn't fault him either. Tell me a bit about his character. I, I looked at him before kick-off today and he looked very calm, having been told this morning that he was in the starting eleven. He looked very calm. Is that, did it surprise you the way he approached the game? No. Uh, it, it's the measure of, of the young players. I mean, it's, it's not, um, we're not doing it for fun, bringing 18-year-old players in just at you know, the drop of a hat. They have, to be, they have to be ready physically and they have to be uh, ready mentally. And, um, you know, the... The last two, three, four, five players that we've brought in, I felt that they've all been ready um, to step in, and they won't let the side down. They won't let themselves down. And um, in fact, I think all of them have g give even better account than that. And you were up against it today. I mean, in terms of your team, so I think the bench picked itself, um, and your first team, you had to rely on, on, on the young lads today because a number of your senior players, the likes of, of Chris Church, I know he's only a youngster himself, but a senior player with 50 odd games under his belt, he was missing today. Of course, uh, Kyle Jake was missing as well. A number <coughs> of players not available. Yeah, we had a, t a total of eight, um, and then obviously if you if you count Richie in there, that's that's nine players that was. Uh, Maybe some of them available for last week, apart from Christian and you know Jordan, the Fagball, etc. But uh, we had a, we had a total of eight, stroke nine players missing. It's very difficult to come to a away game and um, you know put a strong performance in as that, particularly second half. Is it a, a mood of disappointment in there and an anger as well tonight? Because or should you have done better to hang on to the lead? Do you, do you put any blame, blame at the, the feet of your players today? No, I mean. I did, as I say, I've got to see. You know, I'd be very annoyed if there was if we didn't work our feet good enough mm. um, to trip somebody in the box at that late stage. But I don't really know. I'm relying on what people are telling me in there, and I won't really know until I see you know see uh, the game on video a little bit closer. Uh, the mood of the camp is that they're very disappointed. The mm. Jets because they had, you know, um, we try and kill the game off with a couple of subs and stuff. But you know, just couldn't see the last minute out. One minute, one minute. And two points difference, you know, that's that's the margin. Well, let's look forward if we can. There's a, a big game on Tuesday night now, the Cheshire Senior Cup in the semi-final away to Macclesfield Town. How seriously are you taking that competition? You've got a squad, really, of players, many of whom have never picked up any silverware. 
well, I'll be taking it very seriously. Uh, I said in the last round, I'll be taking, you know, uh, the first team, the first team squad, mm -hmm. um, the strongest team that I can put out on, on Tuesday. Um, and I won't believe in anybody out of that. You know, it's, for me, I'm, I want to go and win the game. Simple as that. You mentioned um, players being injured and absent today. Um, can I ask first about about Kyle Jay? Because we know it was a, a car accident that he's been involved in. How is he? Well, he had a car accident on his way home from training on um, on Thursday evening, and uh, he went to the hospital with a sort of damaged shoulder and damaged neck. Um, to what extent we don't know because the doctors apparently told him it's going to get worse over the next few days rather than better. So we're not going to know that until after the weekend. Um, Chris Churchman with his concussion. Yeah, Chris Churchman. It was sort of delayed concussion apparently from last Saturday when he got injured at home, um, and he, he, you know under the protocol with concussion yeah. today, you know we have to give him a bit of space before we can bring him back in. So probably the worst possible week really to lose Richie Baker, wasn't it? T tell us about the machinations and how that, that, that's all come about. Well, Richie. Um, got a really good offer. I mean, I've, I've read some nonsense this week about him going there for less money. That'd be a first, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, he's, he's leaving 3,000 fans to go to Kelmer Park for less money. I don't think so. <laughs> is he a player you'd actively seek now to replace before the end of the season? I know there's only seven games left, but it, it, it leaves a hole, doesn't it? I think it's going to be difficult to replace at this stage of the season. Yeah. Um, you know, people are tied in, and uh, you know everybody's um, trying to push on. It's going to be it's going to be difficult to replace. Um, Rich is a good player. Um, he saw a better offer, and um, he, le he left in the right manner. We spoke, you know, no problem with him with him going in terms of uh, he went for the right reasons as, as far as he was concerned. Um, so there's no issues with that, um, none whatsoever. Can we replace him in such a short time? Going to be difficult. OK, I'll listen. Bad luck today and we wish you all the best on Tuesday night. Thank you.